It's this guy in Boulder in 91. <laughs> I'm on a fucking, my nose is wide open. Maybe 92. I'm walking around, my nose is wide open. I'm doing comedy. I'm getting a divorce. And they're just coming to me. I got these people who want to do scams, and I'm running scams on them. I, you know, but the only person I was running a scam on was, was on myself. But there was this one dude, no names. <laughs> He comes to me one day, he's like, hey, I need a pound of weed. I gave him like some low ball number, 800, without even showing him the pound of weed. He gave me the 800. I didn't see him for about three weeks. <laughs> he came up to me, I'm like, what are you talking about? The guy was supposed to bring it to the bar. No, I left, I go, oh fuck, I gotta set this up all over again, I'm sorry. I, the guy lives up in the fucking mountains. I mean, this went on for fucking years. I owed this guy the 800 for years. Then I went to New York, and he was part of the circle I hung out with, so he knew I had gone to New York. And I was dating a chick in the village, and I would go over there on Sundays. And one afternoon early, we're swapping spit, and the phone rings, and it's this fucking kid looking for his fucking 800. So I started making money orders to, to pay my uh, child support, but I would take the receipt and write his name on it and make a copy of it and mail it to him. And say, I told you, I sent you the fucking money. Or I told Lee, this guy chased me down till about fucking 96. God knows when he's going to show up. I, he hasn't even tortured me on social media. I wish he would at least torture me on social media, but never give Careful up. Careful what you wish for. No, the moral of the story is never give up. Somebody owes you 800, you hunt them down till the fucking day is over. All right, that's it, and that's that. Mm -hmm.